Well, I'm a man of my word. Kinda. I promised I'd cover this if the whole series turned up, although only half of it has. However, the episodes are twice as long, so there's as much of it as the 84 series. It's all changed for 85. Still a thousand contestants, still a ten grand prize. But out goes Willie Rushton and the man who interviewed Nixon, and in their stead, Grape Crusher and Dollhouse Stamper, Stu Francis. Plus there's a new theme, with state-of-the-art 1985 CGI. We're not going abroad this time, it's more of a staycation. Bournemouth, on the beautiful south coast of England, is the town to play host to Ultra Quiz 1985. These days when someone's trying to get you into a new show, it's always, oh stick with it, it starts getting good around season 4, and never. In the first minute, Stu Francis rides in on the back of an elephant. Ultra Quiz, the greatest quiz on earth, with glittering stars from stage and screen. And he doesn't make you hang around to hear the catchphrase. And starring for your delight tonight, Stu Francis and Sarah Hollenby. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready! In a bit of trivia, Hollenby's married to the hunky vicar of Keeping Up Appearances, slash Ian Beale's accountant. Contestants bomb in like they're running from a tiger, gathering of the juggalos directed by Bernie Clifton. Is that John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> Enough clowns, let's quiz. Stu Francis stood next to a guy in a wig dressed as a caveman and a clown wearing a shirt declaring himself official bikini inspector. How can this get any better? Well... So let's get the show on the road with the help of our right royal ringmaster, Mr. Jim Davidson! Yeah! Oh, look at the gear. Hello. Hi, Jim. How are you? Mm, nice I'm not kissing you, are you? Not you not see all them people go like that? Oh, now I know how Moses felt when he parted the Red Sea. Roughly 100 seconds before Jim's doing the chalky voice. <laughs> Do you know my mate applied for a job in the circus, old chalky? Did he? He found up, he said, Mum, me applying for the advertisement you put in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get it? No, no, they said he didn't have the right qualifications. What were they? White face clown. <laughs> <laughs> but this year, it feels like they want to be anything but an actual game show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ultra Quiz. Fancycle Fasters! Fancycle Fancycle! Here they are! I know it's trendy to only be afraid of clowns and go on about how sinister they are, but I think we've nailed the exact point that began. Got fabulous feet. I love my fabulous feet. Yeah! Oh, yeah! I like it, I like it, I like it! Fantastic! You know that bit in It where Pennywise sheds the clown disguise to reveal his true, horrible form? It smells of horses. Heidi high. Heidi high! It's Felix Fabulous! Melvin Hayes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, of course, it's Bobby Langford. Bobby! Oh, lovely. Almost 15 minutes in, we're only just starting quizzing. Sir David Frost wouldn't have stood for this. And as before, we begin with some runaround. The famous clown, Grok, used to delight audiences by taking a tiny musical instrument from an enormous case. Does that look like a thousand people to you? I think we're being conned here. Let's bring on the lion 
Tamer and the Bournemouth Bone Crushers. The Bournemouth Bone Crushers. Good dream of the Southern Okay, Bone Crushers, put the losers into the lion's den. The lion's den. This thing's got celebrity guests coming out of its arse. So far, they've only got rid of two contestants. Gonna have to pick up the pace a bit. Hold your horse, here they come. Into the Spider-Verse, skip the Spidey who failed a CRB check. The answer is... Marcel Marcel! No way that's a thousand people. They're further whittled down with the horse parade. Get out of the way, give these horses plenty of room because ooh, they could crush your foot. Which is basically a horse facts observation round. We have eight-year-old Bertie, Bertie the donkey, and six-year-old Ultra the mule. Yes, it's the great Bob champion. And there's an Arab horse. Now this is one of the most famous racehorses ever. Red Run. I was led to believe David Frost would be here. Where's bloody Rushton? <laughs> Time's up. There's quite a lot of live props this series, presumably using the same animal welfare officer who worked on Cannibal Holocaust. Then a high diver in a cape takes ages and ages to get into safety gear, and even longer to climb a tower, while watched by Princess Diana. Olivia Coleman and Mike Von Erich, before mistakenly thinking his mic isn't working. Pretty sure I can't show a man setting himself on fire, but that's what he does, and it's fine. Looks as if there might be a problem. Anyway, it's off to Jersey for round two. Will it be Fleming Dahl from Wimborne? Tina Wade from Bournemouth? Alan Dunn from Braco in Perthshire? Jane Keyworth from Doncaster? In this period, all Variety had lengthy routines from dance crews named after their male choreographer. In this case, the Nigel Lithgow dancers. Yes, him off American Idol, etc. Also, every second of said routines was utterly fucking deranged. They even dragged the contestants into it. The cross-gender dance team are far too erotically charged for a quiz hosted by him off Cracker Jack. Uh, can you handle it? Better get a grip, cause it's slippery around the hips. Ooh, I could wank a willy. Rip a tissue, it's our 27 contestants. In 84, most of the sillier games were essentially still a quiz, but not here. Everyone get dressed as a wine waiter. We're having a race. Yeah, sounds easy, doesn't it? That's what we thought. So, we'd put our contestants on roller skates. <laughs> well, one roller skate. And good luck in particular to those old, infirm or disabled contestants. Ready? Waiter! Here they come, here they come. And off we go, we have one, two. Come on, my love. The way you went down in that last race, I bet you thought Zola Bud was behind you. With light entertainment cranked up to 11, you're never more than seconds from another celebrity guest. Sucker, flipping it! It's Fred Feast! Cheers. Hey, it's Charles Hungerford from Bergerac. 
Charlie's helping a game of find that fish with 15 seconds to pull out a specific breed. Sardine. Nine times they do this. Nine fish. Stu making his puns about place and oh my god. Silver whiting. Scad. Just when I'm thinking, wish I was doing a video about diarrhea instead. We're in a spooky castle where something magical's about to happen. Take a guess at what happens next. Wrong. In the sun it's rain, in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! In the sun the weird, and it don't look good, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! For any relatives wondering what I want played at my funeral. <laughs> you know what? They might have even topped this one. And if you like the classic sheeted ghost, Game 3 really delivers. Ooh, I could crush a grape. <laughs> yes, that's me, all right, Ultra Quizzes. Is that true or false? Stan Boardman's here, adding mimes to a history test with a table of hats and wigs. Writing stuff down on paper, now this is proper Ultra Quiz. Unlike a cow milking race. And we're going to see just how much milk some frantic finger work will yield. Eileen, what should our contestants really be trying to do? Pull hard. Yes. <laughs> and go gently in the same time. I mean, that's good advice in a lot of situations. And oh. keep going, keep going all the time. Whether the milk is coming or not, keep going. Then yeah. the milk will come. Start milking now! And, and how long do you have to, to work on each other? No, oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, on each other? Yes. On each teat, really. On each teat. Sorry. Dread to think what Willie Rushton would have been up to here. <laughs> That's actually something difficulty, that polka. <laughs> Ultra quizzers, would you be so kind as to step forward and empty your milk into the containers. Why not use an old t-shirt like everyone else? Well, we found our two losers here, Phil and Pat. So we will have to say goodbye to you here. Oh, and would you believe? Well, don't you worry, you two. We'll find you an, an odd job. You can milk the ball. Oi, I do the wanking jokes round here. Yet more animals for a memory game. And we haven't made them up. They are genuine prices supplied to us by a leading Jersey auctioneer. All right, I believe you. I think games designer Giles Brandreth went home early this week. Which is why we are now going to play Find That Tomato. Stan has hidden ten of them in this haystack. And if you find any grapes in there, give it to Stu, he'll crush them. Did this one ever end up in the Olympics? Ah, she's well come on, come on, oh, no, it's it's an orange! Nice and orange. <laughs> Back in you go! <laughs> yeah! Commiserations for our loser. Stan Boardman is appearing at the Inn on the Park jersey and Fred Feast at the Opera House jersey. Ten remaining players are taken to Stratford-upon-Avon. Two weeks ago in Bournemouth, hundreds of happy hopefuls started on the Ultra Quiz Trail. Hundreds? I bloody knew it. See you in court. We're in Stratford. So is there an absolutely mental Shakespeare-themed dance number? You betcha. Hello and welcome.
welcome to round three of Ultra Quiz 85. Bit windy, Stu, mate. Episode three's got the atmosphere of a ruined summer fate. No contingency for taking it indoors if the weather turns. Mike's rattling as everyone's blown about. Even pissing down with rain at one point. A nonsense they get up to this week. A book race. We've got, we've got a clear winner here, but we've got a stampede for second place. Right then. Congratulations, young man. Oh, and somebody's tumbled the books of gone. Eli Woods and Sherry Hewson as Anthony and Cleopatra. Can you not feel your love? Can you not feel it welling up? Not it, in the tight time, worry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to be thinking about. Eli Woods getting a stiffy. Bet it's like blowing up a camping bed. Stu's loving it, though. A lady, I have sped from Rome to sweep you off your feet. If it surprises me not. Really? My lady. No, no, because you look like a blooming broomstick. <laughs> a windy Shakespeare quiz. A Midsummer Night's Dream. Perfectly correct. Taming of the Shrew. The Taming of the Shrew is, shrew is right. A famous romantic couples quiz. Yeah, Scott Fitzgerald. That's absolutely right, Scott Fitzgerald. A medieval minstrel named that tune, but instead of being given desks, contestants are made to lay on the grass with their asses pointing at the camera. Hey, Stu. What? I love Morris dancing. Yeah. Which one's Morris? And Arthur Mullard as a bumpkin. Yeah. I've got something for you two. Not one of your long-stemmed mushrooms, is it? Some people think the country joke was a fic. We may be fic, but we ain't stupid. <laughs> one game, called Old English Traditions, is held in the actual garden of Shakespeare's dead mum. I could just see her now, hanging out of that window, calling to young Will. Man, you, she wouldn't shout, Will, come in and stop playing with your toys. With Will, it would be, Will, come in and stop toying with your plays. Stu's gags are really something to behold, and I defy anyone to pick out a best. Yeah, the still walker, poor fella, he's got a bad leg. Hold muscle, no, woodworm. <laughs> In fact, our budget's so tight, the next game's called Robin Hood and his Merry Man. Actually, talking about horses, you know, my, my grandfather, when he died, left all his money to sick animals. Really? Yeah. He didn't know they were sick when he backed them. Hey, you'll never guess what Terence has been teaching me to make with fish stew. Fish stew? What did you guess? I had the occasion to mull it over. <laughs> <laughs> Big red nose, baggy clothes, screaming and shouting. That reminds me, I must phone the wife. <laughs> A real comedy connoisseur, he loves other people's jokes too. Loves them so much, he always repeats the punchline. What's that? You have to sleep with a granny. You <laughs> have to sleep oh, with a yes. granny. We've got a rather attractive camel there, who's obviously got the hump, or two. Oh, I do got the hump. Well, I did go down with a bit of a bump, didn't I? A bit of a bump, you did. <laughs> well, it's not all mine, you know. <laughs> it's not mine, I like it. So I ought to be done by now. Ought to be done, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back to the quiz. Where'd they get the buzzers from? Chernobyl? Question one. According to tradition, William Shakespeare shares his birthday... <laughs> oh, yes. St. Swithin's Day falls on the 15th of which summer month? Max? July. July is perfectly correct, Max. Now, as you can see, each contestant is wearing a hat. Like in Inglorious Bastards, they have to figure out which dead author's on their hat. But I'm more interested in the way Stu exits frame. OK, here we go then. I cannot get enough of Stu Francis's body language. Maybe it's the tight jeans crushing his grapes. But this is the walk of a man who is pure light entertainment. Who are you? Stevenson. Who are you? Think of last year. Proverb game with Mullard. Great oats from little... Peter. 
Never cost a clerk to... Angela? I've got a headache. Can they not just put a hand up? One. They that dance must pay the... Max? Piper. Wrong, not Piper. And Price. No, sorry, Peter. Tune. Sorry, not Tune. Sorry, man. No, they that dance must pay the fiddler. In a final indignity, they spell Eli Woods incorrectly on the credits. The last available episode is off to Blackpool, and because it's the 80s. Summer lovin', add me a blast. Summer lovin', happens so fast. At this point, I've seen more grease covers than sunrises, although not many where the rockers were scouse. The combination of ultra quiz in Blackpool, the beating heart of British variety, results in some powerful alchemy. Excuse me. What? Uh, how do I hire a deck chair? Well, it's easy, Granddad. All you got to do is stick a couple of bricks under the legs, and that way it will be higher. <laughs> Wilmot and Dennis. Les is such a perfect 80s comedy punk. Yeah, well, you'll have to be careful, Granddad. The main problem with this job is that working with teachers, things are stacked against you. Excuse me. Beach-based antics include a sandcastle race and ice cream tasting contest. Peter, Nana. Nana? You should learn a talk proper. How do you go on when you're going down the street and somebody says, Excuse me, tutti frutti? <laughs> I say, what, me? With a wife and four kids? <laughs> I know I said I couldn't settle on a best stew gag, but I think I've landed on this. Listen, look, <laughs> which British author does that remind you of? Don't know. I don't know. Which British author does that remind us of? Arthur Conan Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> Conan Doyle. But it's Blackpool Beach. It's Stu Francis. The one place we're safe from hauntological scares. Then along comes Les Dennis, dressed like Mr. Punch. Television! Television! Listen, it'll never last. I tell you what, I'll give it five years, and then it'll be back to the tried and tested Punch and Judy routine. Woo! Sausages! Honestly, I'm in agony. I wish he'd get his nails cut. This is at least a segue into a game. Max. No, the Boer War was in 1900. Sorry. That's true? Yeah. Right. Uh, Rubinstein was German, not Russian. Rubinstein is a Russian composer. Next, in another windy day, it's a beauty contest hosted by Jimmy Tarbuck, by which I mean Les Dennis with one of his teeth blacked out going, ho ho, every two seconds. Tracy. Tracy, ho ho, yes. And do you have any hobbies, Tracy? Oh, ho, there's no answer to that. But I like to uh, encourage young talent. Hey, Jim, there's a bit of talent there I wouldn't mind encouraging. Oh, yes. Hey, <laughs> who do you think's favourite today? I don't know, Jim. They all look well out in front to me. Oh, I get your point. He's no Eric Morley. The conceit is that each lovely lady brings a maths question for contestants. And the answer to our first question is 36. Oh, Vicky, thank you very much, Jimmy, my dear. Thank oh, you. Yes, and uh, what are your hobbies? Um, tennis, water skiing, drama. Oh, plenty of those. But it's definitely not an excuse to have ten women in swimming costumes made out of tissue paper stand in the freezing sea breeze. I mean, if this was in 4K, you could only show it after midnight. God, Benny. This does answer those questions of how Les managed to win Amanda Holden's heart. What patter? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Debbie. If I'm not there in five minutes, start without me. Yeah. And your name, my love? It's Dawn. It's Dawn. <laughs> and where, where is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. It's the middle of the day. Ho, oh, oh. Fall asleep in the greenhouse. Les Dennis. Ho, oh, oh, yes. In, Thank you. I know, I know. Les has been on twice and he's not said it. I'm well eggy about it too. But then the great Bella Emberg turns up and... Are you enjoying your holiday in Blackpool, Mavis? Well, I don't really know, Bella. I particularly enjoy the way Bella pronounces the words, a hole. But hang on, it hasn't got a hole in it. I wonder what'll crop up tonight. Well, there has been a call for kippers. Oh. 
Vince Hill literally sings the Blackpool Guidebook. Wheels, water, rides and scores of amusement park favourites, the pleasure beach. Before more unhinged song and dance. They're really strict about you bumping into the 2P machines. Do we think this lot voted for Brexit or...? There's scant five minutes left when the best thing of the entire series happens. Hey, Tommy! Tommy Cannon! We've got a problem. What? I brought Bobby here for the day. I can't find him anywhere. Must... Tommy! Oh, what are you doing in there? <laughs> I'm filling this quicksand and I'm big and sinking! Oh, you... oh, sorry. Come on out, will you? Get him out, Come will on. you? Come on. Hey! Look at that bump. Flawless. Further cements my idea they were the best British tag team we never had. Bobby the snappy little dynamite kid ball of rage. Tom the big Blackpool bruiser. After a final game collecting balls with boxing gloves, they're off to Scarborough, but we won't see it. Who won? Who knows? I feel like I did. Won and lost. Ultra Quiz 85 might not have the gravitas of Frost or the whimsy of Rushton, but it's simultaneously one of the best and worst things ever televised. Ooh, I can yank me YouTube. As far as grapes and that, Stu's been rather restrained in his catchphrase, ain't he? Or has he? Ooh, I could duff a daffodil. Oh, I could duff a daffodil. Ooh, I could duff a daffodil. Ooh, I could jump off a doll's house. Ooh, I could wake up a warlock. Ooh, I could bust a ghost. Ooh, I could crush a grape. Verily, I could crush ye grape. Stu? Ooh, I could crush a grape. Les Dennis is appearing at the North Pier of Blackpool, Gary Wilmot at the Grand Piers of Blackpool, and Bella Emberg at the Bournemouth International Centre.